missing. One, she is a fantastic singer. And second, she has been first volunteer, one of the first volunteers who's helped us set up the organization, Save a Mother in India. Thank you so much. And now we invite to a great kind of applause at Houston Sides. Welcome as I invite Shabana Ji on stage. Save a Mother from its inception and very, very proud of the work that it is doing. Having worked in the trenches with NGOs for the last 30 years, I know how difficult it is to stay afloat. NGOs have to deal with having to struggle for finances. They have to comply with myriad regulations, bear the scrutiny of authorities, produce results for donors, and above all, keep the promises to the communities that they, have, they are working with. And very proudly, I say, on all counts, Save a Mother ticks all the boxes. Congratulations. <laughs> In the 21st century, no mother should die giving birth to a child. Experts estimate that 70% of these deaths are entirely preventable. Like Ashish was saying, with very small interventions, by taking very small precautions, this can be drastically, drastically reduced. The number of women that die due to pregnancy-related issues in one week in India is the same, is more than a whole year in all of Europe. Let me explain this in other terms. The number of women we lose due to pregnancy related issues in one year in India is the same as having 400 airplane crashes a year. Can you imagine what would happen if that were the case? Governments would fall. But because it's poor rural women who are dying, nobody's paying the slightest attention. Of course, there are exceptions. And amongst them, Save a Mother is its most shining example. As supporters and donors of SAM, you should be very proud of the impact of your organization. Starting with just one village 10 years ago, you have expanded to 1100. I don't know why Ashish keeps saying 1500. I was given 1100 as a figure, which is the correct one, Dr. Ganju. Both? both? <laughs> I don't understand those mathematics. Anyway, maybe 1100, maybe 1500. The point is, it's a huge number. And you have brought down maternal mortality by 90% and infant mortality by 60%. It truly is remarkable. And like Ashish said in Gadak in Karnataka, where you're working in 167 villages, for the last two years, not a single mother has died due to pregnancy. That is quite a record. <laughs> You know, the, the 
results that you've achieved, I mean, I was with you yesterday, I'm here again today, I still find it unbelievable. It seems such a dramatic thing, done so simply, as the videos could see, all we're doing is really empowering the community to take on responsibility, giving them respect and making them understand that they need to take charge of their own lives. That health is a right, but it's also a responsibility. And in this very simple way, you can see the pride, the confidence with which these women are now owning the fact that they are the frontline workers. Like I've said, it's still unbelievable, but because I'm familiar with some of your leaders at the ground level and know some of the funding agencies in India, I know that as an organization you are ethical, you are frugal and you are competent. Competent is a too small a word for what you are achieving. I really want to congratulate you from the bottom of my heart. Shines with hope. And she says, 
that I have dreams and I will achieve them. A young girl with confidence struggling for her place in the sun. It's remarkable. But for every such Lalima, there are thousands of Lalimas who watch helplessly as life passes them by. They are without hope. They are without opportunity. Such was not always the case. Her ancestors flourished in the most fertile civilizations of the world. Rich ancient capitals of Magad, of Ujjaini, of Kanauj, flourished just 250 miles away from where she lives. 80 miles from there, Gautam Buddha gave his first sermon. 100 miles away from there, in Lucknow, syncretic culture reached its zenith. 50 miles from where she lives, Kabir and Tulsidas wrote their poetry. Saints and soldiers both lived of her hard labor. Saints and soldiers lived of her hard labor. She was manipulated with impunity without her consent. She was always at the receiving end. Then unscrupulous kings silenced her. Now inscrutable markets have marginalized her. But she's not crying foul. She's not even protesting. All she's asking for is her right to exist as a woman. She's not pleading for mercy. She's asking for her right to contribute. All she needs is a hand to hold it. Some of my father's lines come back to me. Let us be true to the promise of change we made her. That promise still hangs like an unpaid loan. Let us be gracious enough to pay the interest even if we are not gallant enough to return the principal. Let us extend our hands to her in solidarity. And let us pray that we come together 10 years from now for your 20th anniversary celebrations. Mm -hmm.